Mike Epstein tweeted, interesting that Apple Music has no songs that reached 1 billion all time streams. There has not been a song, period, that's reached a billion streams on Apple. The closest song is Ed Sheeran's Shape of You with 930 million streams. Comparatively, Miley Cyrus's Flowers is the fastest song to ever reach 1 billion streams on Spotify in just four months. All right, so Apple Music only has 98 million users worldwide. Now, I know that sounds like a big number to say only, but you compare that to Spotify, there's 515 million users worldwide. So you can have everybody on the platform just stream the song twice and bam, there you go, you had a million. People have to stream 10 times on Apple to hit yeah. a billion. Yeah. I mean, not you know, not a million, a billion. But let's get into the details of how you can use this as an artist, this information, because it's not as cut and dry as it looks on the surface at the same time. Number one, let's think about business model. Because when you think about business model and you understand the numbers, it lets you know maybe what platform you should focus on and then also how you think about the platform. Spotify, 515 million users worldwide, 210 million of those are premium users. So people who are actually paying, right? That's a part of why Apple does it doesn't have as many users they don't have a free tier and where did apple music get most of their users from they got it from iphone users people who are already in the ecosystem let me just get this thing mm -hmm. spotify is another thing another user experience that's some of the basic numbers but then you can't just look at the overall you also have to look at the demographics the us that looks different when we talk about apple music users in the us versus the rest of the world mm -hmm. and we have people clients that most of their streams occur on Apple Music, not Spotify. Mm -hmm. So what is your demographic? You have to pay attention to what the people who listen to you like the most, what, the, what platforms they use the most, and then that'll inform you on how to focus, right? So let's look at, again, some of these excuses. People talk about things like, well, is bots an issue for Spotify? That could add to it. Yeah. Like, come on. It's, it's, it's probably at least 10, 15%. Right? On oh, why, yeah, yeah. They, they get billions, <laughs> right? But then you have Apple heavily centralized in the US and more fragmented elsewhere, right? Mm -hmm. They say more than 33 million people subscribe to Apple Music in the United States. That's a third, basically, yeah. of their users. It takes the leading position among music platforms in the country. It's number one in the United States over Spotify. I actually didn't know that. See that? So around 27% of the digital music consumers in the country use the platform. So if you're trying to get to a Billy and you're trying to be global, you know, Mr. Worldwide, like Pitbull, then you need to be on Spotify. But if you're in the U.S. and you're just trying to hit as many specifically in the U.S., Apple Music might be the better platform still for you in terms of focus. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. I actually never thought about that. And then Spotify, too, is making a lot of initiatives to build in different countries. So it's... it's probably just gonna get worse over time yeah you know and i, I think the other point too and i, I guess this this probably kind of goes into the bots but spotify is the official scoreboard of the music industry so you know people are always going to try yes. to game and drive most of their attention to the platform that yep. everybody is looking at right like yep. and i always wondered if that's a um that's a conscious decision Apple made to not do that you know what i'm saying like they're like no we stand out this race you know what i'm saying like we just want to be all about the music but yeah but it, it is something to think about, right? Like, if I know that, you know, this platform is going to drive 80% of my visibility and it's the platform where people are going to come to to publicly judge me, then, like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to put most of my resources to make sure, like, this thing looks big, you know, or Facts. bigger than the others. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I get it. I, actually, what this makes me think about, too, it's kind of crazy. Because I will always see it with, like, certain campaigns we would do right. What I would notice is that, like, whenever we would have an ad campaign that was going well, where it was converting mostly to Apple, a lot of those people would also go buy the song on iTunes, mm. right? Because they're, they're connected to each other. They're in that same Apple store or whatever, or yeah. iTunes store. So, I, I learned really early on, like, man, like, Apple Music users are willing to spend money. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if it's a little bit amount, a little yeah. bit amount, right? Like, they're at least willing to pay that 69 cents or nine, or whatever the, the single price is. We on, had a on campaign that. where a guy made like a thousand dollars in iTunes sales, right? Yeah, it was um, Kalen. Kalen, well, no, maybe not Kalen. No, see, you're right. Yeah, we had a guy, yeah, he made like a band off of it. And then that was an Indian we had like five or six of them where they broke even on that, or oh, damn near broke even on that ad spend. Because remember, we, we was, you know, I don't know if this, we still working on it, but sauce, we, we was working on making that a part of the ad break even funnel, right? Like, yo, yeah. like, we keep driving these iTunes sales. Like, a lot of our clients are at least 
making 80% to 100% of the ad return back. Not saying that's the case for everybody running yeah. ads to iTunes, but we were seeing it with probably like, I would argue like one out of every like four or five campaigns, somebody yeah. would, would, would get that result. Like we learned really early on, like, hey man, out these Apple Music users down and spend some money, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like they down there at least spend, like I said, that 69 cents to, to 9.99, depending yep. on how they feel versus spotify spotify <laughs> is just soundcloud 2.0 man i'm i'm, I'm sorry to say it you know what I'm in many ways yeah it's just soundcloud I mean, look they got a free tier <laughs> i know that's they what i'm spending yeah. money on spotify yeah. yeah so yeah and then we talk about like 60 percent of your platform is free users that means 60 percent of the users aren't even willing to spend money on the thing they love they damn sure not spending money on you you know what i'm saying i hate to say it there's always exceptions to the rule but hey you got to take the little signs where they are 60 percent of the people you're marketing to don't even want to pay for the thing they used to listen to their music you know not to bash those people but it, it paints a very clear picture of what you're working with when you're on that platform you know yeah I mean? again i mean that information it, like, i guess we haven't really spoken too much about the break in even following how we had people making money or break well breaking, breaking even, even at yeah. least on their ads while getting streams because of apple um itunes purchases but even beyond that again what's your demographic like mm -hmm. josh talked about in the uk Apple's still having a, a decent presence, particularly the iPhone. Yeah, UK iOS is 50% and Android is 48%. I mean, that's that's a heavy stronghold as well. I wonder what the Apple Music usage is over there. Let's see. July 26, 2022, it says, according to the report, uh, the iMore.com report, there are 39 million monthly active users in the UK streaming 138 billion songs a month. I think they're just saying that wrong. Not 138 billion songs. I think they're saying amounts of 38 billion streams a month. Cause that would be like crazy. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I think it might be that. Like the collected amount of songs they're all streaming is 138. Not like there's 138 billion like on it. That's what I think. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That right there is crazy because that means the U Apple Music is bigger in the UK than it is in the US. Yeah, it's crazy. It's already our number one. Yeah. So exactly, hmm. but. That, that goes to show you a lot about those two marketplaces as well and yeah. what platforms you use. And we had to get really deep into this when we were working with a lot of artists who had international strategies yep. or they didn't just have an international strategy, they were international artists. Yep. Or we're finding out about all these other streaming services like, oh yeah, they don't even use Apple Music like that. I mean, in Russia, right? They didn't have yeah, what? Yeah, Russia was like VK. I think they, they got they got Spotify now, but yeah. like at the time when we were like really big and pushing like Eastern Europe and Russia, like they didn't have Spotify. So we had yeah. like, what's the other platforms? VK, YouTube. Yep. You know what I'm saying? When we did um a lot of our like, let's say like different parts of like Africa, you know, campaigns for different people in different parts of Africa, like you see Boomplay and Apple Music and, um Deezer and what's the other one? Audio, Audio Mac, Mac. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yep. So, yeah, bro, we learned a lot about how different platforms play a part in the the local ecosystems of the, of the, of the places the music industry because, yeah, like you said, like you might be thinking like, man, I'm going to run my Spotify numbers up in Russia and then you're wondering why your shit ain't doing well and all the people in Russia looking at this shit like, Spotify, what the fuck is that? You know yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So understand your demographic understand where they go to listen to music and it's not all the same we just keep hearing about yeah. spotify and apple as defaults but it really does bust down a little bit more granular than you think and even though generally speaking we just said apple music dominates in the u.s apple music dominates in the uk your niche it might not necessarily be the same yeah. so yeah figure out what that looks like you got any other thoughts on that Nah, not really. You already said, it. like I said, like you, you, there's room to grow outside the big three: Spotify, Apple, YouTube. But it takes a lot of research and geographical breakdown. But if you're willing to do it, it's a good investment. Right, All right. So. But you could be messing around, running ads in the country that don't got your platform to your point that you said yeah. earlier, yeah. and you're wasting money. You wondering why your conversions are so so slow, so low, or you don't have one of their primary platforms as an option. Mm -hmm. So now you're missing out. Because mm -hmm. your, your music might not even be on that platform, distributed on that platform. Yeah. So you're wondering why your conversions aren't as low as they should be. Man, they said conversions are low in that country. And it's like, nah, but you only have two, two of the main ones. Yeah. The main ones. And yeah. their biggest one you don't have as an option. So Yeah, we used to never I remember running the campaign to France and I remember like it was it was doing okay. And then we added like diesel to it and it jumped up like fifteen percent. Yep. Like, oh well the niggas just wanted they they platform. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like that's so, it. Yeah. Keep it in mind. That is yet another clip from No Labels Necessary. This is Brandman Sean. I'm Corey. Go watch another clip. We out. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>
All right, yeah, we're going to do this uh, Spotify stuff. I just thought about it from a hook standpoint. Okay. 